Samsung might have been one of the first at launching a global foldable, but it hasn't been alone in this market. The only thing playing in its favor for the last couple of years is that its major competitors were mostly still in China. Now, while this has allowed the company to reign supreme and dominate, it also came at the expense of a design that many consider dated as those Chinese foldables have gone global. It's the main reason why all eyes are on what Samsung is going to do next, but uh, for the looks of it, Apparently, it's not that much. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and uh, how about if we do another deep dive over the next batch of Galaxy foldables? Let's begin talking about design. Samsung's flagship foldable devices have undergone some improvements over the last couple of years, sure, but uh, if we're honest, the changes have been more in line with refinements than what I'd really call innovation. At this point, we thought it was time for a refresh of the fold variants in particular, given they've uh, pretty much looked the same for four generations. Thing is, it seems the lack of changes might continue as uh, leaks suggest that any changes may be really minor. A welcome possible update is that rumors indicate that Samsung might adjust the aspect ratio of the outer display to create a more spacious and user-friendly experience. Despite uh, considering various prototypes for the Z Fold 5, Samsung ultimately stuck with the current design, citing its superior usability, grip, and portability, and I did get to see prototypes of how much the company experimented with the various other options just to prove that they tried. <laughs> I'm seriously curious if any of those possible designs was considered for the next generation foldable. There only time will tell. Anyways, recent leaks and uh, renders offer a glimpse into uh, what these potential changes might bring. While the aspect ratio adjustment may offer some welcome changes, the overall design remains familiar with the device's front panel still narrower than competitors like the OnePlus Open and the Pixel Fold 2, or Pixel Fold currently. Additionally, speculation suggests that the Galaxy Z Fold 6 may retain its status as one of the thickest foldable devices in the market despite advancements in battery technology, allowing competitors to pack larger batteries into slimmer profiles. Yeah, I'm uh, not necessarily going to celebrate that as uh, wider and thicker don't necessarily work well. An interesting report does have Samsung still wanting the throne when it comes to display technology. The company is expected to incorporate brighter and more efficient panels for the Z Fold 6 with the aim of matching or even surpassing the impressive peak brightness of 2800 nits that we have on devices like the OnePlus Open. Now, when it comes to the hinge, I'm not going to call Samsung's three-part design for the Z Fold 5 as an innovation because competitors uh, had already figured this out years prior. Yes, Samsung finally got rid of the gap, but uh, nothing Motorola and Chinese manufacturers can solve since day one, and those have also done a better job with the crease. All this being said, it's expected for the Z Fold 6 to continue to leverage that same approach we saw last year, which is to be expected given how long it took for Samsung to figure that out. Now, when it comes to specifications, one thing that does have the company standing apart is that its foldables aren't running last year's chips or are late to adopting the latest ones when they launch like some competitors. Reports do claim that the Galaxy Z Fold 6 is expected to continue this trend by sharing many and internals with the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Anticipated specifications include the use of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy, accompanied by either 12 or 16 gigs of RAM, super fast UFS 4.0 storage, and the sizable battery to power the foldable experience, though details on the latter aren't uh, yet fully confirmed. That said, this is about the time when you should grab some popcorn. See, there's speculation about the possibility of an advanced variant of the Z Fold 6 hitting the shelves. Alongside this Q6 unit seen in testing, which aligns with the leaked images, there's also been mention of a phone codename Q6A. Initially thought to be the entry-level foldable, recent reports suggest that it may actually be an ultra variant, boasting a more premium build. However, more details are needed to confirm these rumors and shed light on what exactly is to be expected for this potential addition to the lineup. And if that's not enough, we also have reports claiming that uh, we could see a more affordable option with an $800 price tag. Though I would take that with a grain of salt because I don't really know if uh, making a Z Fold even cheaper than the Z Flip is possible or convenient for the company. If anything, it would make sense to just uh, keep the previous year variants for an extra year and just cut the price tag. 
Now let's switch to the other elephant in the room, which is the cameras. Obviously, that one thing these Galaxy Z Fold and Flip variants do not get right is the camera department, and not because they aren't good, they're pretty comparable, but not what I'd call worth how much you're paying for these phones. Those possible ultra rumors do have me a bit excited because uh, the regular variant is already starting to sound even more boring. The latest rumors suggest that the Galaxy Z Fold 6 may not receive a significant camera upgrade, potentially utilizing the same 50 megapixel GN3 sensor as its predecessor and the one before that. Accompanying this primary sensor could be a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens and a 3x telephoto shooter, offering versatility, but not groundbreaking zoom capabilities or the best primary camera performance for a phone that's far more expensive than the Galaxy S24 Ultra. I know. Initially, there were speculations about a possible shift to a 200 megapixel sensor similar to the one found on the Galaxy S24 Ultra. However, these rumors were quickly retracted, likely due to the space constraints that foldable devices bring, which may limit the accommodation of such large sensors. As a result, indication now suggests that the Z Fold 6's sensor will remain largely unchanged from the previous model. Yes, I can already see you in the comments calling out how much OnePlus has already figured that out with the Open or Honor with the Magic V2 already solving the problem. Samsung really has a lot of catching up to do. Now, as for selfie performance, uh, details about potential improvements, the front and uh, the under display cameras are still scarce, but it's anticipated that the enhancements in image processing through the ISP will uh, speed improvements in image quality, which yes, we have noticed on the Galaxy S24 series, particularly with their new color tuning, even with that old hardware. Now switching gears over to software, I will say One UI for its foldables has been pretty good, but I can't really say that it's a major departure into taking advantage of the form factor fully. Sure, you can multitask side by side and get a cumbersome third window you'll probably not be able to use, but uh, then that's it. It's a card I don't think Samsung can play any longer when you have devices like the OnePlus Open bringing new ways to multitask into the space. For this generation, we're expecting One UI 6.1.1, which is anticipated to introduce several foldable specific features and optimizations to further enhance the experience of the Z Fold 6. Additionally, the integration of Samsung's Galaxy AI platform, initially introduced with the S24 series, is expected to bring additional smart functionalities, though I'm thinking uh, these have to be better than what we currently have, as Samsung has already announced that its previous foldables are getting these S24 AI features, or at least most of them. Now, one very important improvement is this whole idea idea of seven years of software updates though, as uh, you're not uh, paying pennies for these foldables. The more expensive the phone, the less you're gonna wanna upgrade every year. I do think those seven years are pretty much guaranteed for anything Samsung launches, at least when it comes to flagships in years to come after the Galaxy S24 launch. Now, when it comes to pricing and availability, well, let's just say that we're expecting them earlier, uh, but not necessarily less expensive or hopefully not more expensive, even if we expect the technology to get cheaper over time as it's uh, become more mainstream. Last year, we got a launch pushed earlier to late July, and it seems this year this trend might continue, with speculation suggesting that the Z Fold 6 and Z Flip 6 could debut as early as the first week or two of July, potentially going on sale by the end of the month. This move aligns with Samsung's pattern to bring forward release dates each year, a strategy that could position its 2024 foldable lineup ahead of schedule, though your guess is as good as mine as to why the company is doing this. Now, as for the price, we sadly don't have any information on any of the variations. We're not expecting it to get more expensive, but we'll see what kind of ultra we could be getting for the money. I mean, wouldn't it be a good idea for the Z Fold 6 to just become the base bottle and drastically less expensive, and then we get an ultra that uh, is the one that's priced at $1,800? I know, time will tell. To conclude, what can I say? We have a possible earlier launch, though keep an eye on the Olympics in Paris, as Samsung is a major sponsor and they have been for decades. Doing a launch there and at the time when we have a Galaxy Ring being teased would make a ton of sense. We hear of similar hardware, similar cameras, possible minor changes to software. So yes, it would make a ton of sense if this became a less expensive base model, don't you think? The technology has matured so much in years that competitors are already hitting that price 
price down hard and with better designs. Time will tell, but uh, we'll keep you updated as things develop as uh, we're still far away. Let us know what you think about my assessment in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles uh, to see me want to love these foldables more than ever. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.